legislative session for the Salisbury City Council. I'd like to call the meeting to order. First, let me welcome everyone to this very strange situation that we're in. Uh, this is a this is uncharted waters for us, and we're going to do our best to handle this process efficiently. Uh, all of the council members are present on the phone. And uh, at this moment, I would like everyone to take a moment for silent meditation, please. Thank you. At this time, I'll call for a motion and a second to adopt the legislative agenda. So moved. Second. Mr. Mr. Boda made the motion. Ms. Blake seconded. All those in favor, I will call the roll. Ms. Jackson? Aye. Ms. Blake? Aye. Ms. Gregory? Aye. Mr. Boda? Aye. And the chair votes aye. I'll call for a motion and a second to adopt, to adopt the, the consent agenda. So moved. Second. Ms. Jackson, Ms. Gregory. Good evening, Mrs. Nichols. Good evening. On the consent agenda tonight, we have the March 9th, 2020 legislative session minutes, resolution number 3020 approving the appointment of Jillian Burns to the Salisbury Historic District Commission for term ending March 2023. Resolution number 3021 appro approving the reappointment of Chris Roberts to the Parks and Recreation Committee for the term ending March 2023. Resolution number 3022 approving the reappointment of Linda Wainer to the Salisbury Historic Commission for the term ending March 2023. Resolution number 3023, approving the reappointment of Charles Ryan Weitzel to the Sustainability Advisory Committee for the term ending March 2023. Resolution number 3024, approving the appointment of Elliot Gill White to the Salisbury Zoo Commission for term ending March 2023 and resolution number 3025 approving the appointment of Jeremy Wolfer to the Disability Advisory Committee for the term ending March 2023 and that concludes the consent agenda for tonight. Hi uh, Ms. Nichols I have one question for you could you just confirm Linda Weiner what was the, con uh, the confirmation to the the zoo commission. Okay, I think we. I think you had originally said historic commission. Okay, um, pardon me. I'm sorry. It, it's. That's sorry. okay. Linda Wayne. Okay. Salisbury Zoo Commission. All right. Uh, any any other comments or questions for the, on the consent agenda? No. Hearing none, I'll call the motion. All those in favor of approval of the consent agenda. Please signify by saying aye. Mr. Boda? Aye. Ms. Jackson? Aye. Ms. Blake? Aye. Mrs. Gregory? Aye. And the chair votes aye. Thank you, Mrs. Nichols. I'll entertain a motion to approve the award of bids. So moved. So, second. Ms. Jackson? Mr. Boda. Good evening, Mrs. Miller. Good evening, everyone. The first item this evening is award of bids for contract number ITB 20-121. That's the Salisbury Fire Department self-contained breathing apparatus. The Department of Procurement received a request from the Salisbury Fire Department to purchase 90 sets of self-contained breathing apparatus utilizing a cooperative purchasing contract held by the Public Procurement Authority, PPA, 
who was the lead public agency for the National Purchasing Partners Government Division, or commonly referred to as NPPV, I'm sorry, NPPP Gov. The PPA is a public entity in the state of Oregon formed by an intergovernmental agreement and is comprised of three participating agencies, which are Oregon Fire Protection Districts. Per Section SC 16-3, General Policy of Competitive Bidding Exceptions of the City of Salisbury Charter, competitive bidding procedures performed by the City of Salisbury are not necessary or appropriate in the following circumstance. Contracts in which the city receives a contract price negotiated by the state, county, or other governmental entity pursuant to a valid contract. This charter designation, therefore, allows the city of Salisbury to participate in competitive solicitations issued and awarded by other governmental entities, such as the PPA. Self-contained breathing apparatus solicitation number 1610 was issued as a request for proposals on October 16, 2016, awarded as a master price agreement on May 15, 2017, and expires on May 29, 2020. This awarded contract was then made available for use by all members of PPA and NPP, NPP Gov through an inter, my goodness, intergovernmental cooperative purchasing agreement. The City of Salisbury is a member of NPP Gov. The solicitation called for a 25% discount off MSRP, but proposers may offer additional discounts based on volume. The Department of Procurement has verified the contract pricing, terms and conditions, and seeks Council's approval to award contract ITB 20-121 to Municipal Emergency Services in the amount of $739,975. There are attached funds in the account noted in your packet to order the gear. Any questions or comments? I have one, uh, just one comment for the public. Uh, this amount of money is $739,000. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Chief, but this is a, uh, every 15 years this happens. Uh, by law, correct? That is correct. Thank you. Um, if there's no other questions, we'll go to number two, please. Very good, thank you. The second item is an award of bid for contract number ITB 20-119. That's the CDBG Neighborhood Sidewalk Construction. The Department of Procurement received a request from the Department of Infrastructure and Development to solicit bids from qualified and experienced contractors to purchase all labor, material, and equipment necessary for the construction of sidewalk, curb, and gutter in the CDBG target areas. The city followed standard bidding practices by advertising in the Daily Times and posting the solicitation on the city of Salisbury's procurement portal and on the state of Maryland's website, eMaryland Marketplace. Four vendors submitted a bid by the due date and time of January 23rd, 2000, excuse me, 2020 at 2.30 p.m. with Barker's Landing Excavation submitting the lowest responsible and responsive bid. I'm sorry, ECM Corporation submitted yeah. the lowest responsible and responsive bid. Their bid was $157,563. The bid prices noted in your packet were based on the estimated quantities needed to complete curb, gutter, and sidewalk along the Church Street, Doverdale neighbor neighborhood, but it was for big comparison purposes. The Department of Procurement hereby requests Council's approval to award a contract for this project to ECM Corporation in the amount of $197,081.72, which is the current amount of funding available in the account Low and Moderate Income Neighborhood Sidewalk Creation 2020. Thank you. Any questions or comments? No. Okay. Ms. Miller, you may go to three. Thank you. The next item is an award of bid for contract number RFP 20-1. 103, it's the Wastewater Treatment Plant Laboratory Information Management System. The Department of Procurement received a request from the Department of Waterworks 
to solicit proposals from qualified vendors to provide a laboratory information management system to support the city's wastewater treatment environmental laboratory operation. Key features of this system would include workflow and data tracking support, mobile capability, and integration with instruments and external systems. The Department of Procurement followed standard solicitation practices by advertising in the Daily Times and posting the solicitation on both the City of Salis Salisbury's procurement portal and on the State of Maryland's website, eMaryland Marketplace Advantage. Five vendors replied by the due date and time of December 10th, 2020 at 2.30 p.m. And their proposals were evaluated according to the criteria specified in the solicitation document and listed in your packet as well. The city conducted interviews with the top three scoring proposers and a best and final offer was requested of the top two vendors. Those vendors being Laptop Laptopia and Promium. The Department of Procurement hereby requests Council's approval to award contract 20-103 to Labtopia. The cost for the first year will be $149,472, which includes licensing, project management and implementation, support, and maintenance. There is sufficient funding in the account noted in your packet for the first year. Costs for years two through five will be approximately $5,500 per year. This is a four-year average amount and will need to be budgeted accordingly by the Department of Waterworks to maintain the software licensing. Very good. Any questions or comments? Hearing none. Oh, you got one more. Okay. Ms. Miller, your last one, please. I have three more. <laughs> oh, three more. Yes. I must have missed a lot. Um, okay. Are, you got I do. These are requests for surplus. Gotcha. Okay. So the first one is a request for surplus from the Department of Field Operations. Uh, our department, Department of Procurement, received a request from the Department of Field Operations to declare 69 units of vehicles and or equipment as surplus. These items have surpassed their useful life, are in poor condition, and costs to bring them back to an operable condition could exceed their current value. Known identification information is included with your packet for each item where possible. And additional details are in the departmental memo. Upon declaration of surplus as approved by council, the Department of Procurement will attempt to sell the items via an auction sale. If unsellable through an auction service, they'll be sold locally as salvage or scrap. Any questions or comments? Very good. Thank you, Mrs. Miller. Two more. Yep, go ahead. Okay. The Department of Procurement received a request from the Salisbury Police Department to, to declare a canine named Miso as surplus, which will allow the dog to be retired and rehomed. Additional details regarding the canine are your are also in your memo. Upon declaration of surplus as approved by council, the Salisbury Police Department will release the dog to a local adoption agency to find suitable new living conditions for the canine, contingent upon an execution of a waiver of liability agreement between the city and the purchaser of the canine. A copy of the draft waiver is attached for your convenience. Any questions or comments? I do have one. Uh, Miso has been with us and uh, served faithfully. Um, I don't like to use the word that he's being surplus. I think we need <laughs> to find him a home really, really quickly. Um, but I understand that this is strictly a legal thing. So, um, okay. Any other questions or comments? Okay, last one. Last one. The Department of Procurement received a request from the Salisbury Fire Department to declare a self-contained breathing apparatus fill station as surplus. Additional details regarding the fill station are in your departmental memo. Upon declaration of surplus as approved by council, the Salisbury Fire Department would like to donate the fill station to the Mardella Volunteer Fire Company. Any questions or comments? Mm -hmm. All 
right, thank you, Mrs. Miller. Thank you, everyone. If there's no other questions, then I'll call the motion. All those in favor of the award of bids, please signify by saying aye. Mr. Boda? Aye. Ms. Jackson? Aye. Ms. Blake? Aye. Ms. Gregory? Aye. The chair votes aye. Thank you very much. We have six, six vote. <laughs> <laughs> Jack, my Jack seems to think he gets a vote as well. <laughs> okay. I want to obtain a motion to approve resolution number 3026. So Second. Who was the original? April was it you? April. April made the motion. Yeah. Ms. Blake seconded. Ms. Glams. Good evening, everyone. Resolution number 3026, a resolution of the city of Salisbury, Maryland, for the purpose of approving the Fourth Amendment disposition contract for the sale of property known as parking lot number 16 and the Salisbury Green. Approving the sales contract between Davis Simpson Holding LLC and R. Miller Properties LLC for the sale of the Salisbury Green to consolidate the two lots and to adjust the deadlines for the redevelopment of the lots. Whereas the mayor and city council previously approved the surplus sale and redevelopment of city parking lot 16 and the Salisbury Green in resolutions 2848 and 2849. And whereas the city parking lot number 16 was sold to Davis Simpsons Holding, Holdings LLC and a disposition contract was executed on June 26, 2018. And whereas the third amendment to the disposition contract signed in June 2019, assigning the buyer's interest to BKR Holdings LLC, and BKR Holdings LLC is now known as Davis Strategic Development LLC. And whereas the Salisbury Green was sold to R. Miller Properties LLC, and a disposition contract was executed on August 7, 2018. And whereas the deeds and disposition contracts for both properties require the, the property to be developed as described in the individual disposition contracts or the properties would revert to city ownership. And whereas the city has determined that it is in the best interest of the citizens of the city to approve the sale of the Salisbury Green by R. Miller Properties LLC to the owner of Lot 16, Davis Strategic Development LLC. And whereas the sale of the property requires an amendment to the disposition contract to be agreed upon and executed between Davis Strategic Development LLC and the city of Salisbury for the redevelopment of Lot 16 and the Salisbury Green with terms acceptable to the city on or before April 15th, 2020, as finally approved by the city solicitor. Thank you, Mrs. Glenn. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, I'll call the motion. All those in favor to approve resolution number 3026, please signify by saying aye. Mr. Boda? Aye. Ms. Jackson? Aye. Ms. Blake? Aye. Mrs. Gregory? Aye. And the chair votes aye. Thank you, Mrs. Glantz. I'll entertain a motion to approve ordinance number 2586. So moved. Angela, I'll give that one to you. Ms. Okay. Ms. Blake? <laughs> Made the motion and Ms. Jackson made the second. Second, yeah. Ms. Jackson. Mr. Feldman, good evening. Good evening. Uh, this is uh, ordinance number 2586. It's an ordinance of the city of Salisbury approving an amendment of the city's capital project fund budget to provide additional funding for a bathroom addition project. Whereas ordinance 2539 fiscal year 20 budget authorized the transfer of $51,000 from the general fund as pay go to the general capital project fund to provide funds for a bathroom addition project at the paleo water treatment plant. And whereas the water works department has estimated that an additional $9,872 is needed to complete the project. And whereas the finance department has determined that $9,872 is available in an unallocated interest earned on funds in the same pool of capital projects. And whereas appropriations 
necessary for the additional funds for the bathroom project must be made upon the recommendation of the mayor and approval of four fifths of the council of the city of Salisbury. Now, therefore, be it ordained by the city council of the city of Salisbury, Maryland, that the city's capital projects fund budget be and is hereby amended as follows. There'll be a decrease in the um, uh, interest account uh, and an increase in the bathroom addition uh, for the additional $9,872 and an increase in the bathroom addition construction account. Uh, it's set forth in the chart um, on the document before you. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, I'll call the motion. All those in favor of ordinance number 2586 for the second reading, please signify by saying aye. Mr. Boda. Aye. Ms. Jackson. Aye. Ms. Blake. Aye. Mrs. Gregory. Aye. And the chair votes aye. Thank you, Mr. Tillman. Thank you. Before I forget, I um, fail to recognize the following people who have volunteered to be on commissions in, in the city. Uh, Jillian Burns, Chris Roberts, Linda Wainer, Charles Ryan Wetzel, Elliot Neal White, and Jeremiah, Jeremy Wolfer. Thank you all to each and every one of you for volunteering your service. It's very much appreciated. We do have the ability on this uh, through a chat room, I believe, to answer any comments from the audience. If anyone has a question or a comment, uh, you can send it through. And Julia, I will ask you to please coordinate those. Thank you. We'll give a couple minutes to you. Seeing none come through, uh, remarks for the good of the order. Anyone? Mr. President? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Glad hey. to have you. Hey, glad to be here. Um, uh, I want to I wanna just take a second um, to uh, thank the council for doing what you're doing. Um, a lot of local governments could uh, you know, shut down um, and, and not make the effort to keep business operating. And um, I think you should be commended for, for keeping it going, for communicating, for uh, allowing the public to see, uh, not only because it's the law and the right thing to do, but because you value transparency. Um, so I think this is great. Uh, I don't think there's any members of the public on here other than uh, city staff and elected officials, but um, you, you know, you should know how important this is um, and uh, you should be applauded for it. I also want to just say uh, uh, thanks uh, to those of you who are able to get on. I know not everybody could, um, but for those of you who are able to get on the Delmarva um, uh, Corona Recovery Task Force call today, um, ended up being 108 um, of the 128 governments from uh, the CND Canal to the Bay Bridge and Tunnel. Who participated uh, so pretty good that we as a peninsula can come together like that I wasn't sure what to expect but I, I thought it was a good sign um, I want to share with you all um, some elements of uh, an order I signed this morning um, we'll post it and I'll share it with everybody uh, it uh, it mostly uh, follows along with the governor's order but we wanted to have an executive uh, order of uh, the state of emergency in place in case we uh, need to get uh, or can get uh, refunds of some of the expenditures that we undertake here uh, from the state or federal government, uh, whatever services might be available. Um, but uh, the, the one uh, uh, management side change that I wanted to share with you, uh, or the, the few management side changes that I want to share with you is uh, Julia has been appointed the city uh, COVID-19 czar. Uh, what that means is essentially that her um, other functions are being delegated to Andy uh, during this period. Um, so um, other supervisory functions, other management functions uh, will will be handled by uh, Deputy City Administrator Kitzrow. Um, 
And the same is true for Chris Damone. Uh, so as public information officer, he's going to be the information director for the crisis. Uh, every uh, of his other functions are delegated to Becca Brown. Uh, and the same is true for Keith Cordry, just in tracking all of the financial impacts um, of this on our organization. Now, that being said, um, that uh, burden is not that heavy. Uh, Keith can uh, you know, handle all sorts of things. Uh, so it's just a, uh, that, that's a small amendment to his, um, what's on his plate right now. But we want to make sure that anything um, is put second to ensuring that we track what's going on with our finances uh, through this crisis. So I just want to let everybody know that. Um, and uh, uh, if you get any questions about, um, you know, what's closed, what's open, and how we're enforcing that, um, feel free to forward to me. Um, as, you know, under uh, 908-220 of the city code, uh, violations of the order uh, will be treated as misdemeanors. Um, but, you know, we're not looking to shut down businesses. Uh, we're not looking to, you know, arrest anybody or anything like that. Bottom line is we just want people to listen. Um, the governor's order has the full force and effect of state law. Uh, so we would just encourage people to do the right thing, um, listen to the governor's order, and we'll get out of this as soon as we can. And I know we all want to. Yeah. Oh, thank you. I, I know I owe April a double cherry uh, ice cream. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Mayor. Appreciate it very much. We appreciate it very much in your leadership, Mr. Mayor. Uh, and I want to thank my fellow council people for hanging in there. Um, I, this is beyond description. I've been through three impactful things in my life. One being the assassination of President Kennedy. Two being the 9-11 incident. And now this. And this by, by far as hit home more than anything else and actually shown that we have to as a city and as a nation have to come together mm -hmm. and certainly for the local people we have to be souls very strong we have great people our people are make us what we are and i know that we'll all follow the cdc guidelines please everyone if you don't have to go out, don't go out for these next few weeks. We can make a difference, each and every one of us. Thank you for your service and God bless you all. Thank you. Have a good evening. Good night, everybody. Everybody, good, good night. night. Good night. Good night. Good night.